Welcome to our lecture online. Now let's take a look at the integrating factors a little bit from a little bit more theoretical point of view. So let's go back and assume that we have a differential equation in the form m times dx plus n times dy equals zero, where m and n are simply functions of x and y. And if we assume that that function or that differential equation is not exact, which means that the partial of m with respect to y is not equal to the partial of n with respect to x, which indicates it's not exact. So then, if it has a solution, if it has a solution, which we can call some function u of x and y, and if that function is equal to a constant, so that we can define du as being equal to this, which of course is therefore equal to zero, just like it is over there, then there must be an integrating factor. It must exist in such a way that if we take this function du, it must then also be equal to this original function multiplied times the integrating factor so that it looks like this. So what we're saying is, if the equation is not exact, but it has a solution, the solution does exist in this format so that du is equal to zero, and we can then say that there must be an integrating factor such that if we take the original equation, we multiply it times the integrating factor, which should still get zero, and therefore, it should still equal the original du. All right. What we can then say also is since, and this is kind of the proof, since we know that m dx plus n dy equals 0, and we know that writing it in this form, which is equal to the du, is also equal to 0, we can then say that the ratio of delta u divided by delta x divided by delta u divided by delta y must equal the ratio of m divided by n. That must be true. And then if we multiply both m and n by the same quantity, the integrating factor like this, that ratio still should still be the same. So therefore we know that f must therefore be an integrating factor. The only condition is that the f will make this an exact equation and that the, ex that the solution u does exist and that u is equal to a constant because du is equal to zero. We can also say that since when we multiply times the integrating factor, the original differential equation, and we still know that it's equal to du, then we can say if we then multiply both sides by a function h, which is a function of the solution to the differential equation u, and if we do that to both sides, then we can say that multiplying this times some function of u, and multiply the right side by some function of u, then they still must be equal to each other. Which means that the integrating factor now becomes simply h, some function of u, multiplied times the integrating factor. And since we can plug in any arbitrary function of u, any arbitrary function of the solution, we then know there must be an infinite number of integration factors, all of the form f, an integrating factor that will make this equation exact, multiplied times any solution or any function of the solution. And so that's a theoretical way of looking at integrating factors, and that's why we know integrating factors must work, and it doesn't matter which integrating factor we use, we should always get the same solution, u, because the ratios must be the same. And that's another look at integrating factors from a slightly more theoretical point of view, and that's how it's done.